Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And believe it or not, I've now had the SB56 uh, for over three months. And I've been using it pretty much constantly. It's gone through you know loads of sets of strings and stuff already. And I always like to kind of come back and explain kind of how it's been, you know, over time. Uh, little niggles and things that, you know, does it live up to expectation and all that sort of thing. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. So if you want to hear more playing, obviously you can watch the first video we did with it or just any video this thing happens to be in, because I think it's been in a few already. And the intro just there, by the way, I had someone ask me in one song that you want to, that you like on guitar, guitar led song, what's the one song that defines rock and roll and why you love guitar? And it had to be one song. And I'm hoping I played it off enough to get away with copyright. Uh, but for me, Jumpin' Jack Flash, that was, I had loads that came to my mind, but that one sort of stuck first. So that's the song I'm going for, for the uh, person that commented that. But back to the guitar then. So let's start with things that I kind of didn't expect. And if you haven't got a P90 guitar, you know, long term, maybe you're not expecting. And that's that balancing P90s in terms of the bass to the treble, the height of each pickup. I have noticed that it is way, way, way more apparent and fussy on a set of P90s than it has been on any guitar I've ever owned before. You know, whether it's Tele, Strat, normal humbuckers. I find that you have to dial this in so right because otherwise you, you will pick up that they're not quite balanced way more than other guitars. And I didn't really expect that sort of thing. So I've been constantly playing with the height of these pickups. And you might have noticed as well, this guitar's top wrapped, which is something I don't normally do. And the reason for that is because I usually use hybrids, so nines up here and regular tens down here. And I found that I just, the bass side, no matter kind of what I did, was just so overpowering. On the treble side, they were sounding really thin. So by going up a gauge, I was kind of adding a bit of meat to the bone, if you will, on the higher strings, and that did help. But I don't like the way tens feel. For me, they're they're too tight, sort of thing, even on a Gibson scale length. And top wrapping was a brilliant way to make tens feel like nines. So whatever it does or doesn't do to the sound, to the sustain, in terms of feel, it absolutely does make them feel uh, more slinky. So that's why uh, that's why this thing's top wrapped. It's all to do with trying to dial in the balance of these pickups, which is a battle, and I'm still kind of tweaking it to be fair, but I didn't kind of expect to have that, you know, compared to all the other guitars I've got sort of thing. So it's definitely not a negative, it's just, it's been a learning experience that I didn't, you know, like I said, expect to have. So other things with this guitar is I have actually put a little dent on it already. I'll try and bring it in and you can see Maybe when the light's on it. It's just above this tone knob here. I'm not sure if the light will pick that up. But obviously this is a nitro finish and it's a satin kind of nitro as well. And it is very, very soft sort of thing. And again, that's not a negative, but I do have other nitro guitars and I found this one to be, you know, the softest, the easiest to kind of mark up. And yeah, give it another couple of months and I know this thing is going to, it's going to look like it's been in the wars because I can already see that dent there kind of spreading and splitting off. So who knows how this thing will look, but if you don't like that sort of thing, um, you know, guitars that get marked up quite easy, then that might be something to watch out for sort of thing. And I suppose the only other thing that's markedly different about this guitar to my others, like we said on the first video, is the neck carve. Now this neck is by far the biggest neck uh, I've got. It might even be the biggest neck I've ever owned because it is it is very large. And personally, I find that very, very comfy. And it even feels weird sometimes to go back to my other guitars. But I do think if you're the sort of player that plays a lot of, you know, full chord sort of thing, where you need every single string and every note to ring out, and you've only got kind of small hands like I have, I do think that the big neck might tire your hand out a little bit because I play with my thumb over the top. Sometimes I do get a little bit of, you know, thumb fatigue if I'm doing a lot of chordy type things on it, whereas I wouldn't get that with my other guitars. But 
again, I personally really like it because it just suits me. But, you know, maybe for someone else, you'll be really surprised how big this is. So, you know, we touched on it in the first video, but even over time, it's still kind of, it still feels like a big neck. It doesn't feel like, you know, normal sort of thing. But other than that, I'm very, very pleased with it. You know, it, I mean, just look at it for a start. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I think it's one of the best looking guitars I've ever had. And that just makes me want to pick it up. Even if I'm in the mood to play something else because of the way it looks, I feel guilty if I don't pick it up. So, you know, that is, I think that's really cool when you've got a guitar that kind of makes you want to play it all the time. But I will say that over the months, it hasn't become my favorite guitar. That is still absolutely by far my T59. This thing is just like, honestly, I could probably just have this and be just as happy as I, as I am with, with, you know, with the others. But so this keeps the favorite kind of place for the time being, unless a T64 comes along. Um, but, you know, regardlessly, this offers something super, super different. And like I said, the looks of it is just out of this world. The only other thing to sort of say, I think, you know, that I've kind of realized owning it over time and speaking of the T64, is that on paper, you would think that because they've got the same pickups, one's soap bar, one's dog ear, but they are the same Lola 50s pickups, you would think that they would kind of, I don't know, not sound similar because they're different constructions, but have a similar vibe sort of thing, but they're not. They are totally, totally different. Like, if you're choosing between this and a T64 because of, you know, the P90s, they are vastly, vastly different guitars. These and this guitar, it seems to prefer, like the tone I had on the intro is about as much gain as these things like. They much prefer a kind of cleaner edge of breakup, you know, no, nothing more kind of thing. Whereas the T64, although it's still got P90s, still a lot of P90s, I feel that, that thing you could like, it's a full on rock and roll machine. You can turn up the gain, turn up the drive, turn up the amp. And the thing will just lap it all up, whereas this kind of starts to feel like it's not in its kind of happy place, if you know what I mean. And for that reason, because they're so, so different, I find myself still wanting the T64 alongside this sort of thing, because they are so, so different. So that's kind of where I'm at with this guitar at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. It's not going anywhere. I love the way it looks. It does sound totally, totally different to the other guitars. It's its own thing. Um, it's just that it hasn't taken the number one spot, that's all. So hopefully you enjoyed that little catch up and uh, I will see you again on the next one because uh, I have dialed in the Opus that we looked at on the last video. I've dialed that in a bit more and I, I know a lot more where I am with it, pros and cons. So we'll look at that on the next one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.